with me as we begin to go before the throne this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for this day that you have made. We can rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, we thank you for every other day that you've done, but there's something special about today, Father, as we acknowledge the fact that Jesus got up. There's something special about the fact that he gave his life so that we can live. There's something special about the fact that he paid the price, that we didn't have to suffer the wrath, Father God, that we didn't have to suffer the penalty of sin, but, but he gave his life so that we can be free, and we are grateful for that today. Father God, as we come before you as a body of believers, Father, we pray that we can lift you up. We pray that we can bless your name. We pray, Father God, that you would be pleased with every word spoken and every song saying, Father God, we desire to give you glory today. Not because of what you've done, but because of who you are. You are a good God. We thank you. We praise you for this opportunity. We thank you, Father God. And we praise you for this opportunity. Father, be with us. Allow your spirit to manifest. Father, we thank you today, Father, for the miracle signs and wonders that will occur as a result of your word going forth. Father, we believe what you have said. We believe, Father God, what you have spoken in your word. So we call those things that be not as though they were. We, we say, Father, this morning that all is well in the city of our soul. Glory to God. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come praise and worship team.
too fast. Is anybody glad that he got up? I know every time, every every resurrection Sunday, we talk about how he got up, and we ask, are you glad that he got up? But are you really glad that he got up? A mighty Russian wind. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This morning we pray for a mighty Russian wind. And though you can't see it where we are, the umbrella just went flying, but it's hot outside, so ain't that much breeze. Amen. But the mighty Russian wind of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Reach up and grab the manna of heaven. The manna of heaven, the bread of heaven. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to tighten it up. Screw it then. This one. Yep, yeah, just tighten it. There it now, hold it. Okay. Okay.
And so Pastor Lisa, Pastor David, Pastor Rodney, and myself, we're all, we're all a family. We have two churches, but we come together to celebrate as one. Amen. Amen. And that's the way it should be. Whether this is your first time visiting with us or tuning in with us, you are a part of the Christian family. You're a part of God's family. And we welcome you today. Amen. Today we have Kids Church. So if you have children, I want to encourage you to go over here to Building C, right here to the left of me. We have a lot of things planned for them. Wonderful teachers. They have different little, um, what do they call the uh, little setups for them, stations. And, I, and they, have, they have surprise gifts for them. They have a they have all kinds of stuff. I kind of want to go in there because it's actually cool. But, you know, adults, we're out here. But if you're a kid anywhere up to the age of, I believe, 16 or 17, you're welcome to go over there and just participate in what they put together. And then we also, for our service today, we had worship already, which was fabulous. And then we have some, some expressions of love in the, in the form of poetry. We're going to have that come up. We're going to also have some teaching, some mighty teaching by the pastors, Pastor Rodney from X Christian Center and Pastor David from B Community. And then we're going to wrap this thing up. We'll do communion together. How many of you guys received your communion today already? Did you get a bag out here in the parking lot? If you did not get a bag, put your high beams on. Just put your high beams on. That way we can make sure we get one to you. Amen? Amen. We have some ministry technicians that will just go around and just confirm to see if you have that. But we will have an opportunity to uh, take communion together. This week we invited people to the table on Thursday and on Friday. I don't know if y'all participated in things like the seven last words, but we had seven last words that were really powerful about everything that Jesus said before he gave up the ghost to go and be with the Father and be right next to him and intercede on our behalf. And he said he wouldn't leave us comfortless. He left us a, cor a comforter. We're not orphans, y'all. So that's something we can celebrate about. Amen. I'm so excited to be here. I'm ex so excited. I love celebrating with my brothers and sisters. And so I'm going to invite Pastor Lisa up. I believe she's the next one up. And she has something prepared for us. So let's just give her a warm welcome. Let's just thank the Lord for the gift of creativity and expression in this beautiful woman of God. She's an anointed, powerful woman. Amen. Amen. You know, I feel kind of like this shouldn't be a regular service. You know, if you can't, if you can't move about, I know it's hot, but I promise you it's a whole lot hotter someplace else. Yeah. Thank you. Somebody got that one. <laughs> the, the amen. It's a whole lot hotter. So I think we can manage to, sh to, to say hallelujah, to wave our hand, to shake our hand, to thank the Lord for another day that he has made. I am actually going to read a poem, um, and it's called Have You Ever. Have you ever reached out to heal the sick? or even raise them from the dead, only to be looked at and accused of being Beelzebub instead? Have you ever had to figure out how to feed a multitude? It's funny, we ask to feed the homeless and still have an attitude. Have you ever had the high priest look to make sure you were done, seeing into his bag of tricks, but not seeing you were God's son? Have you ever been accused of a thing and could not be your own defense? So it's easy, easy to see how rabbits and Easter eggs could stir up some kind of offense. Some people think to be like Christ is such a hard thing to do. But when was the last time you died for someone who decided to crucify you? Was there ever a time you walked the globe to spread the good news? only to be mocked and scorned and crucified under the label King of the Jews? Have you ever had to have nails driven through your hands? Often, if we break a nail, we gladly scrap the whole plan. Have you ever had to carry a cross up a hill with tears in your eyes, knowing that when you finally reach the top, it will be the place that you would die? 
Do you ever remember being beaten, flesh ripped from your bones, knowing that the blood that was flowing from your back was going to be used to atone? Have you ever had to say goodbye while giving your mother away, hoping that she would still believe you'd see her again someday? If you never had to do these things, your challenge is yet small to give. Remember what it was like for Christ, and he gave you his life to live. Amen. 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 I'm not sure who's next. Glory to God. Am I introducing somebody else? Pastors. Oh, we get ready for the word, y'all. Let's pray. The word is coming, and I know they're going to pray, but let, let's pray so we can prepare our hearts for the word of God. So let's, let's pray. Father, we just thank you today. I'm going to ask you if you don't mind. I know if you're in your cars, you can't stand. But if you're out here, if you can just stand, just stand to your feet. Just stand to your feet. I know you might be worn out. Take a sip of water and stand up anyhow. I believe God is worth it. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. And he's given us another opportunity to show him how much we love him. So we're going to honor him today as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for breaking off whatever strongholds might have your people bound this morning, Father God. But I thank you that we can operate and celebrate and rejoice in the freedom that your son came to give. Your word says that he who he set free is free indeed. And he said, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free in you. So, Father, help us to be free in you this morning. Glory to God. Help Help us to lift our hands, to raise our voices, to shout a shout that is worthy, glory to God, of all that you have done for us. I thank you today. Glory to God. I thank you today because you didn't have to do it, but you brought us through. Father, a year ago today, we, it was hard for us to get together. We had to stay apart, Father, but today is a new day. Glory to your name for healing in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. We thank you. We honor you and we praise you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, let us just give the Lord a praise as Pastor Rodney and Pastor David come to bring the word. Amen. Man, God is so good to us, isn't he? Amen. <laughs> Blessed his name. What a wonderful day this is to be able to stand before God's people. You know, as uh, we as a leadership team just began to make plans for this day, we said, well, you know, we need a new theme because it's no longer just six feet. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. So what we said, it needs to be about it. It's time for us to get up. Oh, wait a minute. That'll take a minute for you guys to think about that. It's time for us to get up and come out. Get up and come out. Well, maybe I need to go a little bit deeper then. Get up and come out. You know, uh, there's so many things that has happened to all of us over this year. We've seen so much change happen that it's difficult for us to even begin to lift our hands. But today, we're going to encourage you to lift your hands. How many people are ready to stomp their feet? Amen. Come on. Amen. All of the things that we hadn't been able to do things we hadn't been able to do. But you know, all this started back way when. Somebody say, way when. Way when. That's the way we would say it down. Way when. When Jesus, he told them, he said, there's a day that is coming when y'all are crucified me. He says, but don't worry about it. Because early on Sunday morning, I guarantee it. I will get up. And so that's why we're here. We're here so that we can get up. 
And it would have been something if, you know, it was only Jesus who announced that. But there were some ladies, I believe, that went to that tomb mm -hmm. to just go check and see, where is my Lord? Is he here? Where is he? And they looked in there and they said, what? Huh. He's not here. Yeah. And they were searching for him, searching for where y'all do with my Lord, uh -huh. yeah. not knowing that, come on, like some of us. He was just right there behind her. Mm -hmm. They said, who are you looking for? Mm -hmm. She didn't recognize him because she had forgot what he had said is that I'm going to get back up. Yeah. So Jesus did the first part for us. He got up so that we can come out. Amen. Yeah. So if you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and get, up, get, get ahead of me in John's Gospel, chapter 20, starting in verse 14 through 16, where she said she turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying, Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She fought with, he was the garden. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go get him. Listen to this. Mary, Jesus said, she turned to him and cried out, Rabboni, which means teacher. So I don't know about y'all, but Jesus just fulfilled the first thing that he said would happen is that he would get up. But what we're here to do is to celebrate the win. We know this is where we begin to celebrate our resurrected servant, Savior, which changed everything for everybody who believes. I want to spend the next few minutes talking about the power of the resurrection, the power of the resurrection. So I like to tell myself like this, I got some PR to do, some PR work to do, some Pastor Rodney work to do. I thought y'all would be. <laughs> that was good later. Maybe I just can't hear, but yeah, but anyway, what I love about the resurrection is that the resurrection sells itself. Amen. Amen. We don't have to tell very many people about Lazarus because how many people know when Jesus called him, he got up and he came out. Amen. But in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 is where I want to go. And this is Paul. Paul begins to share something with us. He says that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. If by any means I may obtain to the resurrection from the dead. Philippians 3 and 10. It's two words. That I want you guys to grasp hold of. The first one is power. Somebody say power. Power. Yeah, power is the ability to overcome resistance. The ability to overcome resistance. In other words, that means that there's something on the other side preventing you from going where you need to go. Yeah, yeah. Well, well maybe I can illustrate a little bit better because right here, what I have is called a balloon and it is deflated. Mm -hmm. But how many people know that the balloon has a purpose? Uh -huh. It has a purpose, and in order for its purpose to be fulfilled, it's gonna need something. Can you guys guess what it needs? Air. It's gonna need... <sighs> some air. So in other words, this power that this balloon needed was some air, and for it to be able to fulfill its purpose. How many people know that Jesus was looking down at us and he was saying that in order for y'all to be able to fulfill your purpose, you're going to need some power because there's a lot of opposition, there's a lot of resistance that is against you. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to illustrate for you I'm going to show you how the power of the resurrection works. Hmm. 
So that brings us to the second word, which is resurrection. And that's simply to overcome death by rising again. Yeah, think about that. To have the resurrection, there has to be something that is dead. That is going to rise. So you put them together, you got the power of the resurrection. You got the ability to overcome resistance. And you got the ability to overcome death by rising again. So what our Bible tells us is that for three days, Jesus laid there. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I was telling Pastor David about this. I said, you know, I just couldn't help myself. I just, I just had to do a nerd thing. I just had to, had to look up what does it take to revive a battery mm. if it's dead. Yeah. They said if you don't really do it right, you need a battery that is of equal size. Mm. Y'all not hearing me right now. Yeah. yeah, amen. So in other words, what Jesus was saying is that if I'm going to get up, I'm going to need all of my father. Yeah. And so his father said, you know what, son? I got you. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. And so his father said, mm, he ain't supposed to be dead. Yeah. Come on. God is looking at some of us, and he's looking at some of y'all dreams and your visions. And he said, he ain't supposed to be dead. You're going to need some power. Yeah. And so what God did is that he allowed heaven's power to flow inside of Jesus. Yeah. And yeah. Jesus came back to life. He overcame death, y'all. Yes, Lord. Yes, he Lord. got up uh -huh. and he came out. And he says, you know what? I did this so that you guys would know that you too have the ability to overcome resistance. To be able to overcome death. Yes, Lord. Wow. Just think about that for a minute. What God did for us is that he gave us that ability, as they tell us in John's gospel, to become born again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the topic that Nicodemus was confused by. He says, wait a minute, what you mean I could become born again? He says, how can this be? Jesus said, you don't understand. He says that unless one becomes born again, they cannot enter into the kingdom. Come on. Yeah. Come on. What God was looking at is us, dead in the trespasses of our sins. And he says, there's got to be a way for me to bring y'all back. And so he did it through his son, Jesus Christ, who took on that mighty task of dying. And he took on that task of being raised so that we, too, can be raised. So I'm going to bring this thing home. Because as I was studying this, it's just two things that Paul said I want y'all to know. He says the first thing is that the goal in life is to be transformed. Oh, wait a minute, y'all. Y'all don't understand what it is to have a life that's transformed. Some of us need to give God a shout right now because you know what you was like before he transformed you. You know what it was like to sit in a place in your life where you're like, can anybody help me? I don't want to be like this, but God said I can. And so he allowed you to experience some transformation. The second thing he said is that I want to experience the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ. Oh my God. Amen. Mm. God transformed me. And then he allowed me to be able to know him. No, wait a minute. Y'all don't understand. I mean to know him. I mean, to know that, you know, to know him, to, where you can just say for yourself, I know that those scars are real. Yeah. That's knowing him, yeah. where he's able to sit down and tell you like he told Tom, come on, man, get a little bit closer. Yeah. I want you to know me. Put your hand right here. Hmm. There's something that happened to me yeah. that changed you. I don't know about y'all. But that's what it is to know somebody where they said, there's something that happened to me that's going to change you. Yeah. God wanted for us to be changed. 
And the only way he can do it was by the power of the resurrection. Amen. He wants for the resurrection to transform your life. It's not good enough for us to sit around and just say, well, that'll just do. Uh -uh. He's looking for us to be excited about the changes that's coming to us. He wants for us to be able to experience knowing him. So as Pastor David's coming, he's going to continue in talking with us. But at the end, you're going to get the opportunity to begin to know Christ if you don't know him to be your Lord and your Savior. Amen. Come on, won't y'all make Pastor David feel welcome up in this place? Amen. Amen. Wasn't that a good word from my brother? Amen. I, I love the opportunity to tag team with Pastor Rodney. We've done it more times than I can count. Um, and 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 I am I am grateful to share with him on this resurrection Sunday. And you know, we've heard about the resurrection before. And, and I am going to take up the same topic that he did, and I want to take a few minutes and talk about the power of the resurrection. Amen. Is that all right with you? Amen. Amen. The power of the resurrection. And, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that uh, we, we, we take for granted because it's not in our face all the time. But there's power in the fact that Jesus was resurrected. Father, I thank you for allowing your manifested power, Father, to work through me. Thank you for the anointing that rests on my life to do what you're calling me to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, when I was young, I had the opportunity to learn about power. Can I just talk to y'all for a second? Mm -hmm. yeah. See, because back, I, I'm, 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 I'm a little older than I look. And so I, I had, in the 80s, I had a big boom box. Y'all remember those? Yep. And I had a big boom box, and it was interesting how the, the effect of music would have on people uh, when you carried a big boom box. And, and so me, people would automatically start patting their fingers and uh, patting their feet and snapping their fingers when they hear a song that they like. But, but you know, I, I came to realize that I enjoyed my boom box but it had a limitation, and it was 8D batteries. <laughs> and when those 8D batteries ran down, the boom box didn't work. <laughs> so having a boom box taught me that there was limited power with batteries. Mm. Yes, I can plug it in, but it wasn't no fun in that past year because mm. I couldn't move around. So the next thing I learned when I became a little older is I had an experience that taught me about power involving music. Again, it was, I was just a music guy. Mm. I had a car with a booming system. <laughs> you know, the car that you hear a block away, that was me. <laughs> and I had the bass up. Wow. I know some people was like, would that boy turn that down? No, I mm -hmm. was enjoying my bass. <laughs> <laughs> the system in the car sounded great, but there was a problem. Now, now you all, I was, I was typical. I had the, the system in the car, I had the tinted windows, I had the wide tires. I, I was, it was on and cracking. You knew it was DL coming, because I had even personalized plates. <laughs> but, but, but I learned quickly that, that the power of the amplifier and speakers would drain the battery if you didn't let the car run. Mm. So, so you be out, you know, you see your boys and you pull out the car, you stop the windows down and you're talking to them and you get back in your car and you go, eh, eh. <laughs> because, because there was not anything regenerating the power. So the power would die from the amplifier and speakers. Mm. The last experience I learned about with power was when I got older. You know, I got my own place and... And, 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 you know, I, we grew up in the Midwest. I was in Rockville, Illinois, and, and, I, I, and I remember, the, I have my own place, and I remember the first storm. And no matter the, the fact that you paid your bill, you were current, 
when the grid went out, you was just out of power. So, 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 so the, the storm would come through, would knock out your power. And what I learned is regardless of where you live or how much you pay on your bill, there are some circumstances that will interrupt your power. Mm -hmm. Each of us had a scenario in our life that we might have been able to identify with. And that I just explained, these are all connected to natural sources of power and can be interrupted. When I became saved, I learned about another type of power. A power that operates regardless of whatever factors are present. A power that operates regardless of what somebody can or cannot do. A power that cannot be interrupted. It can't run out. And if the grid malfunctions, the power won't be interrupted either. The power was displayed in the Passover season about 2,021 years ago. The power began on a Friday. And it started with this man named Jesus. They took him. They beat him. They gave him stripes. They placed a crown of thorns on his head. And blood came streaming down. We sing a song today that the blood will never lose its power. Because the power that occurred 2,021 years ago is still flowing today. Amen. It hasn't been interrupted. The batteries haven't run out. Uh, 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 the, 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 the grid hasn't stopped working. The power of the blood is still in operation. It didn't matter if you sinned long ago. It didn't matter if you sinned today. It doesn't matter if you even sin tomorrow. Mm. The power of the blood still works. Yes, and I'm amen. excited about that because it doesn't matter if I slip up sometime and I say or think the wrong thing. The blood of Jesus is still in operation and still has power. Amen? We see what can wash away my sins. Hmm. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Uh, the power that was displayed during that week didn't stop with the power of the blood. Oh, I know I tripped some people up right there because, you know, we know the power of the blood, but there was something else that occurred. Uh, uh, not only uh, did a life get sacrificed and blood shed to save the sinful nature of man, it possessed the ability to give life the, 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 of, 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 to a person that had been beaten, to a person that had been battered, to a person that had been scarred. Uh, we know that the power of Jesus raising up from the dead manifested in that same Passover week. We know that after Jesus endured the mocking, endured the shame, he was hung up on the cross. The Bible says after all that was needed had taken place, he placed his head in the lock of his shoulders and he gave up the ghost. The ghost wasn't taken from him. He gave it up because he was still God in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And when he gave up the ghost, his body was lifeless. They took him to a tomb. They laid him in the tomb and they wrote the stone in front of the tomb. The Bible says that on Sunday morning, yeah. All right. and this is what Pastor Rodney alluded to on Sunday morning, they want to dress his body as they do in the Jewish culture. They, they dress the body. They, they cover it with spices and oil. They want to dress the body. And, and when they got there, there was no body present. Come on now. Oh, not 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 no body, but no body, body present. Amen. Because Come on. the body Come had, on. had been risen. Uh, uh, the Bible says in the book of Luke in the 24th chapter, uh, in the second beginning at the second verse, but they found the stone rolled away 
from the tomb. They, they, then they went in and did not find the body of Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed. They were confused about this. Yeah. They, behold, <coughs> two men were stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among, among the, the dead. dead? Come on. On Sunday morning, you all, there, there was a power that occurred. On Sunday morning, there, there was a, a power that gave life. On Sunday morning, there was something that stirred in the grave of Jesus, and his body couldn't be held down. The, the praise and worship team said, death couldn't hold him down. Mm -mm. Uh, uh, the prince of, of this world couldn't hold him down because the power that God had placed inside of him began to stir, and that power gave his body back life. Now, what did he get the power for? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> because the Bible says... Something interesting. So, so, so let me just read this in Acts. And it says, Paul was saying, uh, excuse me, Peter was saying, him being delivered, uh, this is the second chapter of Acts, the 23rd and 24th verse, verse. It says, him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God. So they knew he was going to die. God, this was no surprise to God. They had already set a plan that Jesus was going to pay the price so that you and I didn't have to feel the wrath of our sin. They had already made a plan that Jesus would die for us. They had already made a plan that he would shed his blood. They had already made a plan. So of the foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, have crucified and put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by death. He couldn't be held by death because he was still God. Hmm. He, couldn't, he couldn't be held by, by, by death because he was still the person that, that was sent down from heaven, that did, lived a sinless life, and that came for the express purpose to save you and me. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus was snatched from the hands of the prince of this world. We can have eternal life. We can have the victory. We, we can have uh, authority over uh, sin and disease. We can have prosperity. All because Jesus took the victory from the enemy and gave it to us. Oh, oh y'all don't want to be happy about that, but... But let me tell you that there was an opportunity for you to be tortured and lost in your sin. And there was an opportunity for you to not have the things that you desire. There was an opportunity for you not to have fellowship with the Father. But Jesus stepped in uh, and, and, and paid the price for the penalty of all the sin that happened from day one to now. And so God in his ultimate power shook the body of Jesus on Sunday morning and Jesus got up with all power of heaven and earth in his hand and because he got up with all the power of heaven and earth in his hand we have now the ability to go to the father we now have the ability to speak those things that be not as though they were Amen. we have the ability to go into the, the 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 king of kings and the lord of lords we have the ability to lay prostrate before him we have the ability to to bow before him and call on the father and the name of jesus we have the ability to stand in faith and believe everything that God promised us in his word. So, so, so what does that mean for me? If you're broken today, you have the ability to be healed today. If your heart is broken, you have the ability to have your heart fixed. If your mind needs renewing, you have the ability to have your mind renewed. Maybe you hurt about something in your past. You have the ability to be healed. Maybe you're believing God for something, and you have the ability to believe him for knowing in faith that it will come to pass. Because Jesus gave us the victory. Yes, he did. And what does that mean 
for us. If he gave us the victory, that means we have power. Yeah. So how do I get this power? How do I get the power that Jesus afforded me by him getting up on the cross? It's simple. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. When you get saved, there's something that enters you called someone that enters you. Let me correct that. Named the Holy Spirit. And because the Holy Spirit is there, he gives you the power to see ahead, to see behind. He gives you the power to go forward or to move back. He gives you the power to make things happen. He gives you the power to break the curses. He gives you the power to break down the tactics and schemes of the enemy because you have power on the inside. Yes. Romans 8 and 11 says this, and I'm closing. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead Come on dwells now. in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. How many of you need a little life today? Come on. <laughs> you're running low on power. How many of you need a little life today? You're, 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 you're not accomplishing all the things that you need to. How many of you all need a little life today? So if you need a little life, the Bible says the power is already in you by way of the Holy Spirit. So what are you saying to yourself? What are you thinking about yourself? Is it lining up with the same things that God said? Are you? Do you have in you uh, words of life or do you have in you words of death? Because what you say. I heard I, I, I heard somebody say that death and life is in the power of the tongue. Choose ye this day. I, I, I am grateful that the power of the cross saved me. I, I wasn't good enough. I, 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 I can't, couldn't do it on my own. I, there was nothing that about me that, that was special enough that I can go into the presence of God without the blood of Jesus covering me. And I want you to know, just like he saved me, he can save you. If you're, if you're here today and you say, I, I, I really want to know about this, this Jesus guy that they're talking about. I really want to know about this, this guy who they're talking about got up from the dead. I don't hear about people being raised from the dead. Well, you just need to read your Bible. And, and those miracle signs and wonders that occurred with Jesus are still happening today by faith-filled people. See, see, if you think back hard enough, you can think about that time when you, sh you something happened and you should have been dead. And you don't know how that situation worked out, but you know that it worked out enough for you to still be here today. That that was that salvation that stepped in. Or, or somebody was so mad at you that they were trying to take you out. But you're still here today. That was the grace that crossed your path. So today, if you're here and you don't understand who this Jesus is we're talking about, if you're online and you're wondering who this Jesus is that we're speaking of, I want to introduce you to him. I'm asking everybody that's in, in the sound of my voice, if you could just stand up and just say this prayer with me. If you're in your car, if you want to stand next to your car, you're welcome to. If you need to stay seated, you can do that. But I, I just, I just wanted for every person that's out here today that don't know that what the reason why we celebrate, they don't know the reason why we celebrate this resurrection day. And I want to introduce you to Jesus, the one who died. So if you would be so kind as to repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I am eternally lost without you. I'm eternally lost without you. 
I'm a hot mess. I'm a hot mess. I messed up. I messed up. I've sinned. I've sinned. But today, but today, I give you my life. I give you my life. And I ask you to save me, Jesus. And I ask you to save me, Jesus. Save me, Jesus. Save me, Jesus. I, I I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe you are the Son of God. And you died and you rose again. And you died and you rose again. And I give myself to you. And I give myself to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning, I want to encourage you to find a Bible-believing church. If you're here, you may be belong to a church. We're B Community Church. We're right here in this building here. We have Acts Christian Center. And, and, and there are other churches that are Bible-believing churches that we want you to get a hold of so you can understand what being saved means. It, it, it does mean that you have to give up some stuff. But I promise you, what you receive is far better than what you give up. And so today, if you're here on this Resurrection Sunday, and you're challenged with something, and, or, or maybe you're just believing God for something. Maybe you're just believing God for something. You're standing in faith. If that's you today, lift up your hands. If you in your car, just blow your horn. If you believe in God for something today, I just want to stand in faith with you. Is, is there something that you've been praying for, you've been in your closet for, you've been believing for? And you're, you're trying to stand, but every time you stand, it just seems more and more challenging. Lord, I'm trying to believe that this is going to work out, but every time I look up, something else happens. The Bible says, the Bible says that you will just believe. So today we stand in faith with you. And I just want to pray for you if you're believing God for something. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come today to thank you for all that you've done, all the ways that you've made, all the doors that you've opened. Father, we thank you for every person that's under the sound of my voice. Father God, we pray that you would speak to their hearts, Father, and open doors, make ways, order their steps, Father God. I thank you for moving barriers, Father God, for canceling the tricks and schemes of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for doing great and mighty things in their life, Father God. I pray that they would see that you're real, and they would know that you're real, and they would have tangible evidence that you're real. Father God, I thank you that they won't give up. I pray, Father God, that you would help them to renew their mind in you. We thank you, Lord, for every door that you've opened, every way that you've made, every way that you've delivered today. Thank you, Lord, for having our backs. You are a good God. You are a mighty God. There's none like you, and we thank you for all that you are and all that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We stand and believe with you this morning for the thing that you're believing God for. Amen? Amen. So we're going to move right into you all. Pastor Rodney is going to come back and join me. And you can take your seats for a moment. We're going to move right into our communion. <laughs> Pastor Rodney. That was good. That was good. Perfect. Somebody said that was good. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. We want to make sure everyone has, has, has had an opportunity to get a, um, a cup. Hallelujah. Make sure you get a cup so you can take communion with us. Now, now some people will say that, hey, I 
I, 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 I haven't lived worthy enough to take communion. And I want to encourage you to partake of communion because Pastor Rodney, I heard him say that communion is health and healing to the bones. Amen. And so if you, if you have not had an opportunity to take it, uh, we want to encourage you to consider taking it. Well, some of you guys may be looking where it is. Uh, the communion is inside of your bag package that you received when you came in. If you open that bag up, dig down to the bottom of it, you will find your communion. For you, Pastor Sharon, you have a bag right there on your chair. Right, is there anybody that still needs communion help? If you do, blow at us. Yes, if you need communion, please blow your tongue, your horn. Amen. Amen. Lift your, lift your hand out your car. Let us know. Lift your hand if you need communion elements. We want everybody to be able to take communion today. Hallelujah. Still needs for us to wait on him. Say, wait on me. Wait on me. Wait on me. As they're getting their elements, Pastor Ronnie, I'm just going to go ahead and pray as we transition to this next part of service. And then you want to talk about the elements of communion. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come thanking you for the ability, Father, to share in the same covenant that you established with your disciples, Father. We thank you for communion and to be able to take, Father God, this example that you set for us of your body and your blood. Father, we pray that uh, it would be health and healing to our body, and we thank you that it will draw us closer to you. We are grateful for what you're doing and who you are in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody should have received somewhere in your bag. It'll be a cup, and on the top of it would be your wafer. So just in case you're not used to this, uh, you peel back the first layer, and that allows access to the wafer, which is the bread. And Jesus said that this is his body. So everybody was able to get to your wafer because this is the bread. All right, and then you peel back the second layer, which gives you access to the cup, which has the juice, which Jesus said is his blood. Right, right here on the front row, we need one. Right here on the front row, we need one, yeah. Man, I like this family. It's a nice family. Everybody's just waiting on each other. Nobody's getting ahead of each other. All right. So everybody's ready. Everybody has their, their, their wafer, which is the bread, and they have their cup of juice, which is the blood. All right. Well, Pastor Dave is going to read the passage. In, this, in 1 Corinthians, the Bible says in the 11th chapter, for I've received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he, um, I'm sorry, and when he had given thanks, I lost my pipe place there, I apologize. He break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of, of me. For no, as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We want to thank everybody that's standing, and for those of you if you can stand, stand with us as we begin to partake together. All of this is just showing that you know we are connected and we are community, but we understand we can't.
So the first thing we wanted to ask you to do is go ahead and just hold up your bread as it said in the scripture that Jesus, he took it and he gave thanks. thanks. So everybody, let's tell God, thank you for this bread. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this body. Thank you for and let us eat together. Thank you. You know, there's not a Sunday that goes by when we take communion that whenever I look into the cup, it doesn't cause me to just pause for a minute to just think about, man, this cup paid for my sins. That this thing was real, that Jesus wanted me to be free, y'all. Mm -hmm. And that this cup allowed me to have forgiveness and he wants for us to be able to forgive others. So just take a look at the cup, y'all. And you may be holding on to some things, but look at the cup and know that you were forgiven. I want you to look at the cup and know that Jesus paid it all. And so with that, we just tell him thank you and let us drink together. Amen. You know, I've been working on my solo, but uh, I didn't quite practice long enough, so they told me I wasn't going to be able to do my solo. <laughs> but maybe what we can do is to get the people who uh, who really do sing, Amen. maybe they'll come and they'll sing a song and we can just begin, oh, that's right, have a song and then we're going to do what? We're going to dismiss. Oh, well, you know what? That's right. We almost forgot. Almost forgot. So, so listen, uh, as, as the praise and worship team makes their way up, we're going to prepare. We want to prepare for giving. And now you have uh, two ways to give, multiple ways to give, actually. Uh, if you want to give to um, the community church, it's dollar sign W-O-C Maricopa. Or the number is, uh, somebody help me out. Oh, Pastor Mickey, what is the number? 520-355-555. 4100. Repeat that again. Amen. The number is 520-355-4100. That's for B Community Church. That's that's text to give. 4100. And if you want to do cash app, <laughs> remember it's dollar sign WOC Maricopa. Amen. And if you want to do acts, it's it's all right, man. I got me a part. Five two zero. Five two zero. Three five five. Three five five. Two eight. Two eight. Two zero. Two zero. Amen. That's for Acts Christian Center. If you want to do text to give, can you can you repeat that number one more time? Five two zero. Three five five. Two, eight, two, zero. Amen. Amen. And we ask you to sow as the Lord has placed Amen. in your heart. You know, Pastor Rodney. You know, we 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 don't. We just let God people be obedient to what God has said. Yes. You know, we you 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 know you're supposed to tithe. We've all been commanded to give, so we ask you to give what God has placed in your heart to do. Amen. Amen. All right, you all, we're going to have the praise and worship team and, and close us out. But Pastor Rodney, I'm grateful for today. I'm grateful for you, Pastor Dave. I'm oh. grateful for you, man. Amen. Thank you for, thank you for um, being, joining with us today as we've done this the past couple of years. This has always been a wonderful thing. And I, and I think we got, before praise and worship team sings, we got some stuff to give away, right? Yes, we do. Amen. But you know, I, I just want to say this about what is taking place here. Is that this, something has happened. The name has changed, but it's transforming you guys to become what you're supposed to be. Amen. Praise the Lord. Community. Community. 
You know it's community when you invite somebody else to participate. What I love about it is that you guys, you ask for love to come and participate in your community. Come on, y'all. Love acts and be community. Amen. Together. People, we got to get excited about what God wants to do in our community. Amen. There's a time that's coming. Amen. Come on, y'all. The time is coming where, you know, we're we going to own some stuff. We're going to be able to do some stuff up in this city. Amen. Amen. The time is coming. We want y'all just to be prayerful about it. Amen. Amen. As God begins to transform this community to become what he wants it to be. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And, and thank you, Pastor Rodney. We love uh, this fellowship that we have together. And, you know, I know we just collected offering. And if you gave, I want to just pray over that seed that you just put, put in the ground. We know that seeds, when they plant it in faith, grow. And we want to uh, pray over that seed. Father, we thank you for everyone that has given today, Father God. And we pray, Father, for those that gave and those that had a desire to give but didn't have. Father God, I thank you for supplying our every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Father, I thank you for opening doors. I thank you for supplying needs. I thank you for being our shepherd. I thank you, Father God, for a checks in the mail and stock splitting, Father God. And I thank you for the unexpected increase as a result of your word. You told us to give and it shall be given to us, pressed down, shaken together, and pouring into our lap. So today, Father, we thank you for what's pouring into our lap in the name of Jesus. Name. And we give you all praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, hallelujah. Can you guys help us out and grab some of these uh, lilies? One of the traditions at Acts Christian Center is we like to give out Easter lilies to uh, various members or various participants in the service and this morning we've identified a few of you guys that we want to make sure that you know we send something home with you um, to just keep the celebration going amen, amen. Um, so we want to first start off with one of the first people that arrived today and that was none other than one of our uh, faithful friends and assistant pastors at one time, which is Pastor Sheila, Sheila Haley. We'd like to bless her with one of these. Let's give her that. Amen. We also like to give it to some of our more mature adults that are here. <laughs> and so we've identified two. Miss Deborah, Sister Deborah. We want to give it to her. And Miss Margaret from Acts Christian Center. Her birthday was yesterday. So we want to bless her. Hey, happy birthday. And then we have another one that we want to give to someone that is just kind of beaming out for us today. And that's Sister, Sister Essie. We want to bless you this morning. <laughs> Someone who has been working to ensure that we have good worship today. Amen. 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 I'm telling you what, Brother Jerry has been faithfully working to get us set up. <laughs> and so we want to bless him. Amen. 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 All right. I love to give these things out. I wish I had more, but you know, this is who God laid on our heart to give it to. Amen. 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 And so we want to also bless the rest of you as well. Uh, we have, we set up, we have a few, just a few snacks. So if you're looking for chicken, you might want to look at it at KFC. <laughs> but we have a few Oreos and the, some crackers, you know, to, to just keep, you know, help tide you over till your resurrection meal is complete. And so we, we set it up for our volunteers, but we're just going to just, if, you, if you're here and you'd like to go over and fellowship or just go over and get a snack, you can do so right over here where this tent is with this green tablecloth. We have more. We'll, you know, when we run out, we'll be able to, there's water and just a few things over there. We just want to just tell you we love you and we don't want to take any of it home. 
Amen. Pastor David don't need that, so we're going to give it away. Amen. Uh, and I also want to just give a huge shout out and thank you to every single one of our volunteers, our praise and worship team, um, our setup team, Sister Tam, oh my gosh, children's ministry, Sister Jess, Sister Shayla, back, Sister Taylor, Sister Tish, um, who else is back there? It's Mama Vera is back there. Um, and so if you helped in any way, all of our setup crew, yes. the old Johns, right? I don't know, that's what I call y'all. The whole family, whole family just comes out and just serves. And Sharice, is she cooked over there? <laughs> and Sharice about done over there. I don't know, Sister Sharice is over there under that tent, y'all. I think that y'all, on um, your way out, pass by there and give a little love offering. Cause you know, you would not want to be out there doing what she is doing, amen? She set up our hospitality. She's over hospitality for the ministry. We love her so much. She's, she's, uh, she's, she's had to endure one of the, I think, hugest or biggest losses a person can. She lost her husband a while back. Um, and instead of her sitting around moping about it and you know allowing herself to just be lost in that, she's every step she's taking to make sure she stays healthy and close to God. And so she's out there serving y'all. And so again, you pass by her, I don't know, maybe you got some double men in your pocketbook, I don't know. Go over there, pass by, give her something, give her some love and encourage her. And I know there's so many of you, Elish, who runs our media, uh, Pastor Sharon, who's running, who's doing, who wears 19,859 hats. Um, but we wanna just, just know that we love you and that we're happy. We always love, we're family. Ax and B, Ax, B, Ax, Ax, B. We family, okay? Um, and so just make sure you're fellowshipping. You know, if you don't feel comfortable, mask. You know, we, we still, uh, we're still walking in uh, supernatural wisdom, which is saying you put that mask back on as soon as you need to, you know, as soon as you can, um, and do what you need to do. For those of you who have kids, please, please don't go to Walmart first. Go get your children. Pick them up. Amen. They should have lots of treats. We didn't feed them the sugar because we didn't want to see what the after effects might be. So we gave them little packages to take home, but you guys make sure you, you take them from them. There are toys in there, and some of you guys have little kids. We want to make sure that our kids stay safe. And so I think that that is all. Anything else? All hearts and minds clear? Amen. One of the things that we say at Acts, and I think it's applicable, especially since y'all have changed your name, is that we love you, we respect you, and we are community. Amen. Amen. Go into another 